going to start today with uh, Camus cypress lawsoniana. This is number nine on list uh, number one, Port Orford cedar in the uh, Cupris ACE. So it's a large uh, conifer in the landscape. There are a number of, uh, number of cultivars that are out there. It is native to the Pacific Northwest in a narrow range near the coast. Okay, it has these uh, somewhat ascending branches with, uh, that droop towards the tips and it has an overall sort of um, uh, uh, pendulous appearance. The, the leaves are tiny, uh, scale-like, they're tightly oppressed to the branches, and uh, the good way to tell Port Orford Cedar is that it has an X, uh, the stomatal bands on the underside, uh, particularly noticeable on the underside of the leaves, uh, they form an X between uh, the scale-like leaves. The cone of Port Orford Cedar is going to be a woody, whoops, and I, of course I dropped it, but it's going to be a woody uh, cone that is uh, generally spherical, in, in nature. That's the female cone that has the seeds inside. The male cones probably challenging to see here, but the male cones are going to be at the very tips of the branches. Okay, so that's where your pollen is going to be produced. So Port Orford cedar, like most of our conifers, are going to be monoecious. Uh, what else? Uh, Port Orford cedar is uh, quite susceptible to Phytophthora lateralis, and so uh, it is an issue, and uh, there are some resistant uh, clones out there and resistant sources of uh, uh, rootstock. So if you're going to plant Port Orford cedar in areas where there's uh, significant Phytophthora pressure, I suggest uh, finding one of those rootstocks. So that is Camus cypress lawsoniana.